Hello again, everybody. Harry Boxer, Technical Trader to TechTrader.com. It is Monday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday night, and um, it's May the 27th. <clears throat> well, the market had a very, very good start to the week. And new highs in the S&P 500 and Transportation Index, all-time highs. And a lot of the technicals showed very good un underpinnings. So I can't get too bearish just yet. And witness the next couple dozen stocks I'm going to show you. Amcor Technology has been in a roaring market, bull market of its own since from 5 to almost 10, doubling just since February. And you can see how the technicals and volume have picked up in the last four or five weeks. Today up another 37 cents, almost 4%. Volume was a steady 2.1 million. And although it is near the top of this channel, when, when, when you look at the long-term pattern, you can see that there is more overhead resistance and potential target. <clears throat> up near 1270, and then eventually the 07 high up around 16 could be had. We'll keep an eye on this one. If momentum continues, wow, very, very strong. ARRS, A R R S, put that out as a swing trade today as the stock moves up across the February high of 3142, getting to 3199 and closing at 3170. Only up 67 cents to 2%, 3 million traded, a little increase in volume, but. You can see how it's been moved up steadily and moved this across this resistance zone. It has me thinking we're going to see it move into the mid and then high 30s. ARTX maybe popped out of a little um, pennant or coil today, mini coil. Has it popped four, uh, 23 cents or 5.2% on a million? I want to see if we can get up near the next target around 515. And once that is taken out, maybe we can get it up to <clears throat> 5 and 3 quarters. So 515, 5 and 3 quarters potential target. BCRX with a big pop today, and when it pulled back, we put out a swing trade on it. At 995, close 999. But after hours, they did announce a secondary. If you take a look at the one minute chart, you'll see it came down, snapped back, and then drifted. It's 967, down about 32 cents based on a $100 million secondary. So we'll just have to see if the timing was bad on this one and whether or not it was able to survive uh, without too much damage. Holds, say, around the moving averages around the 9.5 uh, area. Uh, let's see, the moving average, mm, nine, the 50s at 916, so I wouldn't want to see anything much more than that. So, unfortunately, it may take a little bit of a drawdown first, but if it can stabilize for a couple days in here after secondary, we may well see this get up to 13. Bitta had a nice pop through resistance zone today, jumping 207 or 5% on almost a million, and uh, looking for a move to test the <clears throat> $47 area, and then beyond that, 52. Nice long-term channel. Cavium, CAVM popped 290 or 6.24%, nearly 2 million traded, but it took out a double top as it gapped up above that and closed at the upper end of the range. A good, um, very good session. Now, when I look at the pattern here, <clears throat> and I draw my lines in, you can see it may be near the top of the channel, but at the same time, we also may be accelerating the channel to look more like this. And if we do get that kind of move, we may very well see the stock move into the uh, mid-50s, my next target. Go at 54.5. CXDC has been unbelievable, and it's moved already in one, two, three, four, five waves, with the fifth wave being the strongest on a big volume. So I wouldn't be in a rush to buy this, having gone from 5 to 11 very quickly. Nevertheless, long term, you can see how the big, big move occurred here taking it to new all-time highs, especially this week. So careful not to chase, but certainly if you're in it, stay in it until you see some support brokers. Diax had a big snapback today, jumping 181 at 27.5% on 6.4 million on some, I believe, some drug news. But my next target would be somewhere up around there. And then I'll be looking for a move to test the highs right near there. So my, my targets are going to be approximately... Let's call it uh, nine and a half, and then 11, nine and a half and 11 my targets on DYAX. FireEye, um, a lot of, I wanted to point out that a lot of stocks are showing kind of like reversal patterns or these turnarounds through the declining tops lines and moving averages with the moving averages crossing over or about to, in some cases they are. But you can see that uh, FireEye has been up for seven days in a row. It looks to me like it just came through the declining top line in a 21-day moving average. Up next, the potential target would be about 42 and three quarters, 43, and then something in the 
um, 47, 48 zone. Keep an eye on this one. Horizon Pharmaceuticals broke out of awards today, popping 83 cents or 6% on 2.9 million. And what was really interesting to me is how after this big run up, they pulled back, that broke the channel. And then the kiss back that tested it, you see how it held up and nicely and coiled. Well, today may have been a key day for it. What's going, what, what's going to really be important is a follow through to 15.15. 15.15 gets you a run-up into maybe a test of the old, of the $18 range. So let's look for 18 and 21 down the road on Horizon. And keep an eye on support. First things first, obviously any move below 12 and a half won't be good. You can be stopped below 11 and a half if you choose to have more leeway. ISIS also, there's another example of a turnaround, particularly in some of the biotechs. The declining top line here was pierced today with the gap breakaway above that Notice the moving average is starting to flatten out and curl up. And we may very well see a test of the 50 at about 30, 33.68 is the next target. Beyond that, potentially up somewhere up here around 37 and a half. Mac, well, after the pop, the big breakaway gap a couple of weeks ago on news, the stock then coiled very tightly and very quietly and has suddenly picked it up. Four days in a row up today, taking out the uh, May 1st, uh, 765 high and closing at 8. Beautiful chart. Looking for more. Looking for 11-ish, 10.5, something like that. Momenta is another example of a biotech stock that may have turned it around. In this case, the moving average is also about to cross over. Note that the major declining top line taken out. A couple of ladders, lateral layers of support. And we have this to contend with around 13, 13.05, maybe tomorrow. But my short-term target is going to be up around here. Let's call it 14 and a half. Maxwell, another new high today, 1843. Did back off to 1790, up only 29 cents or 1.65% on three quarters of a million. But I like the way it looks, and I'm looking for more. Targeting, let's call it 21. And Newell, this is something I want you to pay attention to. You see a stock that comes down like this. With a 50 for 1 reverse split, and then explodes a huge volume right to the neckline of this potential hidden shoulders, left shoulder, head, maybe a right shoulder forming. The pullback for three days is coming low volume. Today it manages to eke out a nickel um, on 7.4 million. A little increase in volume, perhaps. Nope, and not even. Less volume than Friday. But as long as it's continuing to consolidate and hold support, I really would like to see this one hold the 224. 40 zone, and right now to today's low is 266. So a little bit of leeway, but I believe that once it gets up through the 480 area, this could be a six, seven, eight dollar stock. OPHT, stock we've had a swing trade on since it broke out, pulled back for two, three days, consolidated nicely. Today gapped and popped the dollar radio of almost 5%, <clears throat> 570,000, a little increase in volume. Let's see if we can get a test of the 42 and a half area, followed by 47 and a half. My two targets. Swing trade PTX broke out of a little consolidation. You'll note that the um, four-day little pullback falling wedge or pennant right near support turned it around two days ago and is continuing. If we run up to the top of this channel, I would not be shocked to see this get to eight and three quarters, nine. Right aid also following through after breaking out yesterday. A little bit of a fall through, not much, 15 cents, but nevertheless 23 and a half million. And it uh, looks to me like we're going to see eight and three quarters. Rax, after the big pop on it, has formed a five-day little falling wedge or pennant. and starting to edge up and out. Not enough volume yet, but keep an eye on this one. If Rax gets to 37 and a half, it could fly right to the 40, 41 range and beyond. Radnet well, may have come out today of this little pennant or flag. We're popping only 17 cents or two and three quarter percent. Yet volume increased to the best in about five sessions. And if we can just get it up through the recent high of 680, I think the stock runs towards eight and a quarter half. SPCB, well, Erica's a happy camper as this stock broke out of the falling wedge and it spiked up. And look how many days in a row this has been up. Seven. Now, usually there's a six, seven day rule that says once the stock does that, it gives you some sort of pullback. But momentum is strong. I would not be surprised to see 11 before too long. Or is it possible it could pull back and flag? Could be a buying opportunity if it does that. SPEX, Monster Day, 97% gain on $45 million. That's like several times the float. Amazing move today. 
Um, and when you look at the intraday move, you'll, you'll see that, well, you, you can see how that stock, by looking at that pattern, had a monster day today. It was the percent gain leader on, on both boards and ran right up to the major declining tops line here, but held on to most of the gains at closing at 297 up, whopping 146. If this is the start of something, well, it was a good thrust across lateral resistance and three moving averages. And my next target would be a test of somewhere around the 420 area. 415, 20 is my target if it falls through. And lastly, today is Triquin Semiconductor, a member of a very strong junior semi group, and that stock just continues ever since the breakaway gap here in the run up. Channel up. And today it's broken through the top of the channel and may accelerate. Looking at a weekly chart and then a longer term chart, you see it just went through the 2011 high at 1520. This is significant because looking even longer, you'll see that a massive base here may have been broken and could lead to a move into the low to mid-20s or better. But that's it for tonight. Everybody have a good evening and I'll talk to you.